A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to what promises to be an illuminating and stimulating event over the next two days. The Eclipse Center is indeed a groundbreaking institution which we are very proud to have here in Malaysia. Events like this, along with the other work done by the center, demonstrate its world-class stature and make an important contribution to promoting the kind of dynamic leadership that is so necessary to respond to the pressing global challenges of today. Every new day, new challenges are thrown at us. And every new day, a leader emerges. The progress the world has seen, especially the rapid changes experienced in the last 100 years, are a result of innovative leaders who have not allowed themselves to be cowed by challenges. While there will always be those who innovate, and while there will always be those who lead, there will also always be those rare individuals who will shine a bit brighter, who will make a greater mark on humanity, and who will be remembered for that bit longer by their communities and by mankind. If we look back through the ages, we will find that there is a common thread that binds the great leaders of the world. A clear vision, conviction of belief, a sense of service, a moral compass, and a desire to leave the world a better place. If we look at the leaders who have made the greatest mark on our lives in the last hundred years, we can see this common thread. Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Nelson Mandela all held, had a clear vision of freedom and conviction in their beliefs, which led to the Mahatma and Dr. King being assassinated and Mandela being incarcerated. They all had a strong moral compass and worked tirelessly to make the world a better place at great personal cost. They have all left behind a powerful legacy as a result of their leadership. In my remarks today, I would like to focus on four other leaders whose powerful personalities and remarkable achievements mean that they are also likely to be remembered long after they are gone. There are certainly many more great leaders, past and present, who may have an equally important impact. But these four, to my mind, coming from very different fields, all display the key characteristics and qualities of leadership and leadership energy. They stand out for their determination and courage, as well as for the magnitude of their achievements. If someone was to ask, who among the seven billion people in the world today is likely to be remembered as a great leader and as a great innovator a hundred years from now, I believe that one of the names put forward would surely be Bill Gates, one of the most renowned innovators of our time. As we all know, Bill Gates co-founded Microsoft with Paul Allen back in the 1970s, 
and four decades later, it remains one of the most influential IT companies of the internet age. Having made his mark and fortune with Microsoft, Bill Gates and his wife Melinda then set up the Gates Foundation in 2000. This remains the largest privately funded charitable organization in the world with an endowment of just over $50 billion. The Gates Foundation has poured billions of dollars into healthcare and education provision for some of the most marginalized and poverty-stricken people in the world. In Africa, in India, Latin America, and China. With its partners, the Gates Foundation has distributed hundreds of thousands of malaria nets, administered millions of vaccinations, and sponsored research into diseases that afflict the poorest in society. Earlier this month, Bill Gates announced that the foundation had produced a range of prototype toilets that can work without water and in the absence of any sewage systems. Untreated sewage is a major carrier of numerous diseases, some fatal but all debilitating, especially affecting the most vulnerable groups in society, children and the elderly. Recognizing this, Bill Gates put his money into addressing this challenge. His vision and considerable investment has already produced significant progress, although his alternative toilets remain a work in progress, especially in terms of affordability. Gates is confident that he will soon be able to bring the price within reach of those who need the technology most, and these toilets will undoubtedly transform the lives of untold millions. Ladies and gentlemen, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of billionaires in our world today, in the United States, China, Russia, and even in our part of the world, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. Many of the wealthy, even those not in the billionaire league, establish charitable foundations to help the less privileged. But Bill Gates, to my mind, has epitomized giving back to society in a way that no other entrepreneur has ever done. He will leave behind a dual legacy as an outstanding IT innovator and an outstanding philanthropist. There is another exceptional leader who may well be remembered in the future, even though his name may not currently ring a bell with most of us. Dr. Bindishwar Pathak, unlike Bill Gates, is neither rich nor is widely known outside his own country of India. But Dr. Dr. Pathak, through his dedication to his society and his determination against the odds, has similarly transformed the lives of millions of his people. He personifies the same indomitable spirit and displays a similar desire to make a real difference in the lives of those at the very bottom of society. Dr. Pathak has directed his leadership skills and energy into this same area of improving the sanitation facilities of the poorest of the poor through the work of his NGO, Sulab International. As well as contributing to better health, this initiative has also helped to transform 
the fortunes of the so-called human scavengers. As members of the untouchable caste, they were previously condemned to spend their entire lives performing this task manually. When Dr. Pathak first talked about building toilets in India's poorest state of Bihar back in 1968, people discouraged him. They said it was not their way of life and that he was wasting his time. It was unrealistic and even insane to imagine that proper sanitation would ever become available for the masses or that the human scavengers, mainly women, would ever be liberated from what Dr. Pathak called their suffocating misery. But like Bill Gates, Dr. Pathak had pinpointed the fundamental importance of this key issue, both to health and to human dignity, and he set about addressing it. As with Bill Gates, the incredible drive and immense achievements of this admirable man reflect his boundless leadership energy as well as the strong humanitarian instinct that lies at its core. In their choice of where to focus their efforts and in their tenacity in pursuing their ambitious goals, both men display the courage and radicalism that characterizes truly outstanding leaders. 50 years on, Sulab has constructed over 1.3 million household toilets in India, as well as thousands of pay-to-use public toilet complexes, some of which are attached to biogas plants that turn waste into energy. His simple two-pit toilet design has been used for 60 million government toilets as in now, and is now spreading beyond India. These achievements have taken decades of work sustained throughout by the dedication of Dr. Pathak. In order to overcome people's reluctance to change the existing system of human waste collection, he himself used to go from house to house motivating people and educating them. In this very slow and painstaking way, Dr. Pathak's efforts have helped to change Indian cultural and psychological attitudes to sanitation. The work of his organization has saved hundreds of thousands of lives and has made the lives of even more people far more healthy and productive, including over a million former scavengers. It is not very often that we find examples of such great leadership in the realm of high politics. But there is one political leader, I believe, who had a tremendously positive impact on his people and who helped to make his country into one of the greatest global powers of this century. That man is Deng Xiaoping, the paramount leader of China for just over a decade from the late 1970s, but whose influence had reverberated far beyond that relatively brief period in power. Deng is certainly a very different type of leader from those I have discussed so far. But the extraordinary radical actions taken by him and their far-reaching impacts do serve as another powerful example of these same leadership qualities. For it was Deng's introduction of deep and far-reaching economic reforms and his opening up of the country to the world economy that set China on the path towards its current prosperity. The standard of living of the Chinese population has continued to rise ever since, and countless millions of people have been lifted out of extreme poverty. China now has the second largest economy in the world with a bigger middle class than the United States 
and it is becoming a global leader in various cutting-edge technologies from renewable energy to artificial intelligence. This incredible progress rests on the foundations that were put into place by Deng and on the radical choices he made in the aftermath of Mao's nearly 30-year rule. While Mao succeeded in unifying China, this came at a very high cost. On his death, he left a population reeling from the Cultural Revolution and an economy still in chaos following the upheavals of the Great Leap Forward. Into this fragile setting, Deng Xiaoping consolidated his political position before introducing his program of reform. He started by letting peasants grow some crops for themselves and allowing some trading to take place. This was already significant and a bold departure from the state-led model pursued under Mao. But by cleverly separating the ideology of capitalism from the operation of market forces, Deng was able to push his reforms forward without posing too much of a challenge to the country's socialist identity or to Mao's legacy. The second aspect of his reform program, openness to the global economy, was equally revolutionary. Its impact was felt immediately in the rapprochement with Japan in 1978 and the business deals made in 1979 with Coca-Cola and Boeing. Both of these would, not have be, would have been unimaginable a few short years earlier. Deng also pursued closer ties across the region, seeking to learn and benefit from the experience of the East and Southeast Asian tiger economies. It was Deng's sustained and successful implementation of what was at the time a very radical approach that marks him out as having been a truly visionary leader. Despite the numerous challenges that he faced throughout his life and political career, and notwithstanding the compromises that he made along the way, Deng Xiaoping's socialism with Chinese characteristics utterly altered the course and destiny of this enormous and unwieldy nation and very much for the better. Just as with Bill Gates and Dr. Pathak, the very scale and the far-reaching nature of this transformation means that Deng's legacy is likely to endure well into the future. He will also be remembered as someone who made an important contribution to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia too has its own heroes. One of these who does not need much introduction among Malaysians, is Dr. Jamila Mahmoud, for whom I personally have a great deal of admiration. Dr. Jamila's leadership energy, her tenacity and vision have propelled Mercy Malaysia, the NGO that she founded in 1999, to become a leading player in domestic and international disaster response and humanitarian relief. Dr. Jamila had a successful career here in Kuala Lumpur as a gynecologist. Yet, she was motivated, driven in fact, to leave behind her comfortable middle-class life and take the path less travel, as she puts it. Inspired by a, a powerful duty to help those less fortunate, she has devoted her humanitarian mission to providing assistance, again to some of the neediest people in the world, in her case, those affected by natural and man-made disasters. Dr. Jamila has been driven by gratitude at her own good fortune in life and inspired by early role models, including her own parents, as well as the strong sense of service inculcated by the convent she attended here in Kuala Lumpur. She was also motivated by a desire to show the world that a woman 
and someone from a non-Western background could contribute in this area of humanitarian assistance. She has certainly met and exceeded this goal as attested to by one of her peers who described her as someone who so fully represents and lives her humanitarian values. Mercy Malaysia today operates in countries around the world delivering medical assistance in war zones and disaster areas. While providing this absolutely vital frontline assistance in these situations, the organization also provides an outlet for Malaysians seeking to use their skill to help others. As with the other leaders mentioned earlier, it has been the same qualities of vision, courage, drive, and tenacity that have enabled Dr. Jamila to establish her groundbreaking organization that continues to do such important humanitarian work. Her legacy may well also endure long into the future, just as she sets a shining example of leadership here in the present. Ladies and gentlemen, to have such a transformative impact on the lives of so many people as the examples I have given is perhaps not something to which we can all aspire. But we can all hope to make some small contribution in our own individual ways and according to our own abilities. Such outstanding and unforgettable leaders may emerge from all walks of life and backgrounds and can operate in any field from high politics to humanitarian relief. The sheer force of personality that is required, along with the other qualities that characterize dynamic leadership, can indeed be found in anyone. It can also perhaps be fostered and nurtured with sufficient motivation and training. Courageous and visionary leadership is something we need now even more than before to meet the ever-growing challenges we face and to take full advantage of the ever-growing opportunities in our fast-changing world. Institutions such as ECLIF and events such as this can inspire us to develop our own visions of change, however small these may be in scale. They can also teach us some of the practical skills and strategies that are necessary to translate these visions into actions. On that note, it is now with great pleasure that I declare this event open. Thank you.